welcome and thanks for joining us on this edition of News 2. I'm Sandra Gaman Singh. Topping our newscast tonight, a federal judge is upholding the decision to remove one gubernatorial candidate from November's ballot. But that candidate isn't accepting that ruling. Former judge and gubernatorial hopeful Soraya Diasi Kofelt announced Wednesday that she plans to file an appeal. News to Erica Parsons has that story. District Court Judge Wilma Lewis with one word destroyed the chances for gubernatorial hopeful Soraya Diasi Kofelt to get a shot at leading the territory. The federal judge on July 7th denied Kofelt's motion for permanent injunction, which if granted would have kept Kofelt on the November 4th ballot. We were very surprised because it essentially contradicts the decision that she had written and issued on June 6th in our favor. Kofelt, who herself is an attorney and former judge and her running mate John Canigata, were disqualified as candidates in the governor's race by the election supervisor. Supervisor Carolyn Fox said based on the VI code, the two are ineligible to run together because Kofelt is a no-party candidate and Canigata a Republican. Kofelt challenged that decision in court and was granted a temporary restraining order in June, which kept her on the ballot. We are undaunted and we feel that the law permits, the through the filing of nomination papers, the law permits any person, whether they're affiliated with a political party or not, to run. And, the, and that's what we continue to stand on. Had the legislature felt that a person who is registered to a political party should not be able to file nomination papers, then it should have clearly stated that. Judge Lewis issued a 41-page opinion defending her decision to side with elections officials, saying that the government's interests in preserving the process were justified, although she recognized that the law doesn't clearly find the two ineligible. This afternoon, the Kofeld camp announced in this statement that they plan to file an appeal. They say their legal team reviewed the issues and disagreed with the judge's ruling. News 2 spoke with Supervisor Fox, who responded that she's there to follow the law, and that's what she did. Upon learning of the Kofeld Canigata team's plans to appeal, she said she's prepared for the process, no matter where it goes and how long it takes. Erica Parsons, News 2. Now, Kofeld said she will ask the Third Circuit Court of Appeals to fast-track the appeal because of the time constraints of this case. She also says they feel confident the request will be granted. Well, here are some important dates to mark on your elections calendar. Now, July 2nd, was the last day, as you know, for primaries registration. On July 31st, the testing of electronic voting machines as well as tabulation equipment and certification by the board will take place. August 2nd is the primary elections. Then August 12th, the casting of lots will be held for position of names on the official election ballot. November 4th is the general election day. And November 18th, the runoff election will be held. Papa has undertaking a number of projects to help improve power efficiency across the territory. Two of those are a solar plant and the construction of a mid-island substation on St. Croix. Last week, the authority's director said he was pleased during a walkthrough of both projects. An underground 69 kV line connects the mid-island and Richmond substations and promises to bring more reliability. The first true transmission rated conductor we have in the territory. We have 34-5 sub-transmission in St. Thomas, but this is 69 kV full transmission, 100% underground, and it, it ties into the substation. We have switch gear, which will step it down to 25 to center the western part of the island. Right now, everybody on the western part of the island is fed from all the way in Richmond, feeders 9, 10, and 8. So. We'll change that. They'll be fed from here. We'll cut line loss. We'll cut down on, on you know, any of that, that voltage issues and reduce the fault current at the plant. In other news, police on St. Croix arrested Shamari Elms based on a warrant issued on June 23rd. Police said on April 19th, about 9.40 p.m., they saw a vehicle swerving on the road in the Anna's Hope area and made a traffic stop. When officers approached, they smelled a strong odor of marijuana. Police asked the driver and Elms, who was a passenger in the vehicle, to step out of the car, which they did. Elms immediately began to run from the area and was pursued by police. 
Officers saw Elms fall and drop a bag that he was carrying and then run again. Officers retrieved the bag. However, Elms eluded police at the time. The bag contained a loaded black Colt 48 revolver as well as marijuana. Police continued to investigate this case and issued a wanted poster for Shamari Elms, who is 24 years old. Elms was arrested on July 7th at about 10 a.m. He was charged with unauthorized possession of a firearm, possession of ammunition, failure to report firearms obtained outside or brought into the Virgin Islands, possession of a controlled substance with intent to distribute, and interfering with an officer discharging his duty. Meanwhile, Crime Stoppers would like to thank you for making a difference. They say let's help make the USVI one of the safest places in the world to live, work, and raise a family. To do that, we have to make sure that no crime goes unsolved. And if you know something, say something. And with that in mind, let's look at this week's Crime Stoppers report. On St. Croix, on Tuesday, July 1st, about 10.30 p.m. in the state Montbijou area, residents reported hearing gunshots to 911. Police officers responded and found 27-year-old Hisu, who was recently released from prison, lying unresponsive between two parked cars. This is the ninth homicide on St. Croix and the 21st for the year. If you know anything about this murder, please call Crime Stoppers. Over on St. John on July 2nd, police received a report of a burglary at a residence in the state Carolina. The burglary happened sometime between 11 a.m. and 6 p.m. Although the home was ransacked, it's unknown at this time if anything was stolen. Please help police solve this crime by telling them what you may know. Now on St. Thomas on Saturday, June 28th, as we reported at 6.15 p.m., 911 dis dispatched police officers to a shooting on Smith Bay Road between Point Pleasant Hotel and Smith Bay Playground. Officers discovered 41-year-old Irvin Clendenen Jr. with a gunshot wound slumped over in the driver's seat of a gray vehicle. There were also several minor females who were passengers in that vehicle. One of them had been shot in the hand, while another female had minor injuries. All of them were taken to the hospital for medical attention. Mr. Clendenen died several hours later. Be part of the solution. Continue to help make the islands a safer place to live and visit by telling crime stoppers what you know about these or any other crimes by calling 1-800-222-TIPS. You can also text USVI plus your message to crimes at 274637. Remember, if your tip leads to an arrest or the recovery of stolen property, weapons, or illegal drugs, you will receive a cash reward to be paid according to your instructions. Turning our attention overseas, President Obama is in Texas for what was initially a fundraising trip but has become much more. The president is meeting with Texas Governor Rick Perry, the two are discussing a growing immigration crisis along the border. Back in Washington, administration officials say the surge of immigrant children is overwhelming. The system and the humanitarian issues are only going to increase. Craig Boswell reports from Capitol Hill. President Obama and Texas Governor Rick Perry plan to discuss the surge of immigrant children from Central America flooding the state. The White House hastily added the roundtable to a fundraising trip. The president is under intense criticism for not traveling to the U.S.-Mexico border while he's in Texas. He's visiting Democratic fat cats to collect checks, and apparently there's no time to look at the disaster, at the devastation that's being caused by his policies. The president made a nearly $4 billion request in emergency funds to deal with the situation. It includes $1.8 billion to help care for unaccompanied children crossing the border and $1.6 billion to step up customs and border efforts. Congress is considering the request, but many lawmakers are already expressing skepticism. The president's asking for $3,700 million. If you divide that by 57,000, that's $65,000 per unaccompanied child. Administration officials testifying Wednesday said 57,000 minors fleeing violence in Guatemala, Honduras, and El Salvador have been picked up since last fall. But we should never forget, these are children. They are now in our custody. It is our duty to make sure that these children are cared for properly. The Department of Justice is now taking steps to prioritize processing hearings for unaccompanied children and immigrant families with children. Craig Boswell, CBS News, Capitol Hill. Keeping our eye on the economy, some people may have gotten money from the federal government that 
they weren't entitled to. That's according to congressional investigators. They say the government may have improperly paid out more than $100 billion last year in tax credits and unemployment benefits. The Obama administration has actually reduced the amount of improper payments since they peaked in 2010. Also, Amazon and Hatchet Book Group continue to dispute over money. The e-commerce giant is now trying to appeal directly to Hatchet's authors. Amazon recently offered the authors 100% of e-book revenue. Here's the New York Stock Exchange with our stock market watch. Everything up, the Dow 78, NASDAQ 27, S&P 9. Coming up on News 2, our summer fun segment. Another fun event you can add to your list of summer things to do. How about some checking out some of the national parks on St. John? Plus, on Friday, shopping and dining will meet historic tours as the Christian said businesses team up with Chant for this summer's heritage jump up. Innovative customers recently experienced call failures on incoming long-distance calls. Although failed or dropped calls are not uncommon in a wireless environment, the high call volume of complaints has prompted innovative engineering team to investigate and determine the underlying issue. Lena Steele Williams, who is the director of engineering, stated the problem was narrowed down to incoming calls on a recently activated trunk group between AT&T Long Distance and Innovative Telephone, which is controlled solely by AT&T. Calls affected included incoming long distance calls routed through the AT&T network, in addition to all local AT&T wireless calls that AT&T routed through the long distance network. Innovative management has decided to block the AT&T trunk in concern and reroute calls over to an existing trunk which would require the assistance of AT&T. Bridget Mills, senior engineer, stated as of today, AT&T has successfully rerouted all calls back to the existing trunk group, and thus far, customer complaints regarding dropped calls have subsided. Innovative apologizes for any inconvenience this may have caused its customers. Well, looking for something fun to do this summer? How about some hiking and then a nice dip in the ocean? The Virgin Islands National Park on St. John, well-developed, which makes exploring the historical sites, beaches, and trails easy and rewarding. The top points of interest are Trunk Bay, Cinnamon Bay, and a Cinnamon Bay Plantation Ruins, and Annaberg Plantation. These are just four of the dozens of beautiful areas you can explore. You can also enjoy the National Park by boat, camping, fishing, kayaking, nature walks, hiking, scuba, diving, snorkeling, and bird watching. Virgin Islands National Park contains examples of most Western tropical Atlantic terrestrial coastal and marine ecosystems. These include various types of subtropical dry to moist forests, salt ponds, beaches, mangroves, seagrass beds, coral reefs, and algal plants. On Friday, something else to put on your calendar, shopping and dining will meet historic tours as the Christiansted businesses team up with Chant for this summer's Heritage Jump Up. There will be storytelling, music, drum and dance, cultural performances, and local vendors. Christiansted stores, of course, will stay open late and this jump up features the return of the free shopping and dining discount passport, which has a lot of bargains. Shoppers can pick up that passport at the Comanche Rum and Wine Bar or Design Works between 4 and 8 p.m. on Friday. Crucian Heritage and Nature Tourism, or CHANT, will be providing guided, guided historic walking tours. The fun begins at 4 and goes until 10 p.m. Meanwhile, some parking restrictions will be in effect for that jump up on Monday from 4 p.m. until the completion of the event. There will be no parking on King or Company Street from King Cross to the Wharf area. No parking on Queen Cross Street from the intersection of Company Street to the waterfront of Caravel Hotel. No parking on Church Street between King and Company Street. Now, any vehicle found parked in the restricted area, the VIP says you may be ticketed and or towed. Traffic traveling eastward into Christiansted will be rerouted at King Cross Street. Vehicular traffic traveling westward on Hospital Street also will be rerouted on Queen Street to proceed west. We'll be sure to stick around. Your news to AccuWeather forecast is coming up next.